Okay, 7.33 here this morning. Time to answer your legal questions. And as always, we turn to Fox 26 senior legal analyst Chris Tritico for that. Good morning to you. Good morning. Let's begin with this question from uh, Bathsheba, who writes, I am emailing on behalf of my 78-year-old mother, my mother-in-law specifically, and my father-in-law, who passed three years ago, and she has sent <coughs> his death certificate to the mortgage company informing them of his death. She is trying to have the mortgage company place the home in her name. Can you please advise her of the steps she needs to take to have this done? Yes. Now, you did this backwards. Uh, unfortunately, the mortgage company does not transfer title. You need to get with the uh, county authorities to do that. You have to go through probate, get a get letters testamentary, and then you can transfer the title. You have to get a title company to do that, to help you with this. And then the mortgage company can transfer the mortgage into your mom's name. The mortgage company is the last step. So get with a probate lawyer of your choice who can help you do this. You can do it very, e you can do this easy, easy in, in with a minimum of title or, or, or things like that. If the house is the only asset that needs to be transferred, you can do it in a simple way. So contact the lawyer of your choice who handles probate matters and you can get this done. Good luck. Okay, our next question here this morning comes from Deshauna, who writes, My father was recently involved in a car accident. My dad had to have an officer come to the scene. The officer was very uncooperative. He would not share any information about the driver and failed to gather his driver's license or insurance information. After speaking with both parties, he accused <coughs> my father of running a stop sign causing the accident. After reading the, the accident report, my dad stated the officer lied and wrote a false report in favor of the other driver. The report also did not include the driver's ID number or insurance information and he was able to drive away from the scene in the uninsured vehicle. How can my father fight against a false accident report? All right, so when you're in an accident, the police <coughs> come out and they're in, in charge of conducting an investigation. Now your father says he, he, he did not run a stop sign. That's your, your father feels that he didn't do that. The inv officer is there to conduct an investigation and come up with conclusions. Your father probably got cited for that um, running a stop sign. He is entitled by law to challenge that ticket in, 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 in municipal court and have a jury trial on that ticket. The fact that the offense report says he ran the stop sign is not the end, end of the day there. Secondly, with respect to the, to, the offense, to the accident, you have your own insurance. Hopefully, you have full coverage on the car. Make, if you do, make the claim under your full coverage and let them handle it. They will be able to figure this out. They will track the guy down and, and make a claim on his coverage if they determine that you are not at fault. All right? So you've got two ways to handle that. Good luck. All right. Our final question this morning comes from Francis. My son and his friend drove to Florida for a cruise, and when trying to board, they had some illegal items that should have been taken away so that they could go on the cruise. <clears throat> Instead, they would not even allow them to get on the cruise and gave them a letter stating a full refund for all of the fees would be paid. Instead, they only refunded the fees and refused to refund the cruise amount. On top of that, they had already boarded his, uh, his luggage, and the cruise left without it. <clears throat> My son had to stay in Florida until the boat returned at a great expense. We have written them requesting a total refund plus hotel fees. I have called and written numerous letters with no positive results. Well, Francis, so your son showed up, and I'm going to guess he probably had marijuana or something like that in his luggage, and they found it. And what they said was they were going to refund the fees, which is exactly what they gave him back was the fees. They probably have a policy that's, that's written that they have that says if you bring illegal items like drugs onto the cruise, you void your right to get on our boat and you waive the money you paid us. They gave him back exactly what they said they would give him. The fact that he didn't get his luggage back did not force him to stay in Florida. He could have made arrangements to get his luggage when the cruise came back. So I don't think that you're, you're going to get any of this money back. Contact the lawyer of your choice, go to his office, sit down, go over all of this with him in private, and talk to him or her and see if there's a way to get the money back. But I think you're, you're not going to ever get any more money than the fees that they paid because that's what they said they would give him. But taking illegal items on a cruise waives that money. Good luck. Yeah. 
All right, if you want to send us your legal questions, and we appreciate you as always, yes. send us uh, an email or hop on our website, fox26houston.com. You can always find Krista's segments under the Morning News tab. And as always, for specific information and advice, contact an attorney of your choice.